Thank you. Uh, the next item of business is a debate uh, on motion 9838 in the name of Christina McKelvey on quick credit voucher tackling tool poverty in Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Christina McKelvey to open the date. Ms McKelvey, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and can I say a grateful thanks to those colleagues across the Chamber who signed the motion in order for it to be debated today, because it's an incredibly important subject that we do debate today. And it's very easy to define fuel poverty because of the relative cost of keeping a... It's not easy, sorry, to define fuel poverty um, of keeping a small flat compared to maybe a big, cold, drafty house, because the, the, the difference is so diverse. And the health and well-being of people who live there and the household income all bearing on costs alongside an unpredictable weather and the wholesale price of energy has a bearing too. And we can't actually look at the UK government for a definition. It is so complicated with median energy and equivalised energy and after housing cost calculations that your head will be spinning and you will be left hopelessly confused. However, fortunately, in Scotland, we've made that a bit more simple. The Scottish Government uses a 10% measure of fuel poverty, so a household that spends more than 10% of its income on adequate energy at home is in fuel poverty. That's how we define it. And in 2016, the fuel poverty rate under this government decreased by 4.2 percentage points, equivalent to around 99,000 fewer households living in fuel poverty. And that year, 26.5% or 649,000 households were fuel pure, poor compared to 30.7 or 748,000 households the year before. There was also a fall in households living in extreme fuel poverty from 203,000 in 2015 to 183,000 in 2016, which corresponds to the fall in the rate from 8.3 to 7.5%. And Age Scotland tell us in the briefing that they prepared for us for today that pensioner and older adult, adult households are more disproportionately affected by fuel poverty those households with children and some without a disability are similarly uh, uh, disproportionately affected too. And as I said, we've made some progress, but we need to do much, much more. And I'll be keen to hear from the Minister and he's summing up what action this government is taking on this matter too, because I know that there's been some things happened over the past wee while. Myself and my uh, colleague, SNP councillor Julia Mars, are determined to seek action from the energy retailers that offer innovative ways to help combat fuel poverty. And this came about because a year ago, uh, past Christmas, both of us were doing independently a wee shift in the local food bank, helping them out at Christmas time. And we were preparing two separate bags, one bag for people who could cook the food and one bag for people who had no energy, so they needed cold food. And that really struck a chord with both of us. And independently, we had a conversation about it and started to pursue some of the energy companies. We feel it's totally unacceptable we find often poor and ill people and people with young children shivering under blankets or eating cold food because they can't afford power in a power-rich nation. We continue to make really heartening progress on this, though. Scottish Power representatives have been enthusiastic and supportive and showed us a real sense of corporate social responsibility in their response to our overtures and met with us on many occasions. We were able to launch the Quick Credit Voucher Scheme with them in Hamilton and Clydesdale Food Banks with the help of the fantastic volunteers there who help match their vulnerable clients to the scheme. And I'm delighted to have some of those fantastic volunteers, including the amazing Isabel Graham and her supporters in the gallery. And of course, Councillor Mars is here too. This voucher, presiding officer, is worth £49 in winter and £30 in the summer. Not a lot to you and I, but a huge amount of money if you don't have any energy in your household. It doesn't have to be repaid, and you can have up to three payments per household made in a 12-month period. Makes a huge difference to people who find themselves in extremity. There are now eight agencies, not just the two of Hamilton and Clydesdale, now eight agencies running the Quick Credit Voucher Scheme with Scottish Power with a mix of food banks and citizen advice offices. But the real numbers, presiding officers, 80 families in Hamilton have been supported in the short months since October since the scheme has been running. And myself and Councillor Miles have written to the Big Six, exploring how each may respond to making up a similar kind of approach to their vulnerable customers. And I would urge them to do so, to look at the Quick Credit Scheme voucher. And I know they have many schemes in place, because I've met with many of them so far, but what people I know need 
is the instant response that they need when attending the food bank. Traditionally, these will be people who will not be opening their bills, answering the calls or interactions from their energy companies. And in many cases, there will people be people who have been disconnected. And most of the energy companies, I have to say, have responded very positively and the meetings that we have had have been incredibly constructive. The main energy companies do have schemes in place, as I said, through their size and scales, these vary, to provide help with arrears or support in finding ways to use fuel more efficiently. The Scottish Gas Energy Trust is one example. That offers people grants to clear outstanding fuel debt and gives families in a difficult situation the chance to get back on track debt-free. And UK-wide in 2016, the Trust has provided 13,500 grants to families in field debt. And also, you don't need to be a Scottish Gas customer to benefit from this scheme. End Powers Food, Food Bank, Fuel Bank sorry, is another uh, example. Launched in 2015, it has helped to provide over 85,000 people across the United Kingdom with financial support. It is a similar scheme to the Quick Credit Voucher one. And like Scottish Gas, they don't really care who supplies your fuel, they will pay you that voucher. In fact, only 3% of the recipients are their own customers. In Power Scheme provides food bank clients who have a prepayment meter with a voucher worth £49 in winter and £30 in summer to top up their gas and electricity. A lifesaver for some. And in Glasgow alone, around 3,100 people have been helped by the scheme since it launched, of which around 2,200 were adults and nearly 900 children. With my trusty sidekick, Councillor Julia Mars, I'm going to visit the Glasgow End Power Fuel Bank next week with volunteers from both the Hamilton and the Clydesdale um, food banks. Nobody should be freezing in the dark or unable to cook their food at this time of year or at any time of the year. And I'm extremely hopeful that the rest of the big six recognise the benefits of backing the quick credit voucher scheme or parallel schemes in conjunct conjunction with local food banks. Presiding officer, my grateful thanks goes to all of the energy companies. We don't often thank them or praise them, but my grateful thank does go because they have engaged so positively. And I look forward to working with them all to make a real difference to those people who need it the most. A special thanks does go to Scottish Power, who have had the foresight to introduce the Quick Credit Voucher Scheme first, and they're happy to share what they've got with others in order to uh, support them roll out. But let's get back to the real numbers. 80 families supported in Hamilton. Imagine that rolled out across Scotland. Imagine that rolled out across the United Kingdom. Imagine how many families can have that help. We can't do much about the weather in Scotland, but no one should have to choose between a warm home or a warm meal. Presiding officer, I move the motion in my name because it's an incredibly important motion and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of the contributions today and I'm looking forward to working with the energy companies. I'm coming to see you and I'm coming to see you next week. Thank you very much. Can, can I politely and gently ask uh, the public in the gallery not to applaud? It's not permitted in the Parliament. I do understand why you want to, but you have to desist. Uh, I now call open debate, call Tom Arthur, followed by Alexander Burnett. Mr Arthur, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to participate in this debate. And I would like to begin by not only congratulating my friend and colleague, Christian, uh, Christina McKell, for securing this, but thanking her and praising her work and that of Councillor Mars as well. This is a, a fantastic initiative, and I have to confess it was one I was not familiar with until the motion uh, came before me. Often these debates can sometimes seem like, um, like adjournment debates at Westminster, can seem like a, an addition and perhaps not the primary focus of Parliament, but the amount one learns in them is, is, is incredible, and I think this is a fantastic scheme that has to be more widely known. I, I would like just to put on record, um, as the motion indicates, uh, my uh, recon recognition for the invaluable contribution that food banks make. In my own constituency of Renfrewshire South, there is East Renfrewshire Food Bank, based in Barhead and there is a Renfrewshire food bank which serves many of my constituents in Renfrewshire um, and just based just outside the constituency. I've had the pleasure of visiting both and they do incredible work. Well, one must admit it is work we would, we would wish we did not have to do because we had a more equitable and fair society where people were not facing these circumstances. And I think it's important just to remember the circumstances that can lead people into fuel poverty and lead people um, to reliance and the need for food banks. Yes, there are circumstances which are incredibly complicated and resist any easy analysis, but there are far too many people who, as a result of the punitive and draconian welfare reforms being implemented by the UK government, 
where people are, are being penalised through sanctions and other measures for the, for the smallest transgression or error. And I think that's something that we, we have to bear in mind. Yes, it's fantastic with initiatives such as the uh, quick credit voucher scheme, but we also have to you know, redouble our efforts to be tackling this at root cause and making sure we have a welfare system that's delivered in Scotland that does put fairness and dignity at its heart and that we continue to push the UK government to deliver a more equitable scheme. As I say, this is a, however, this is a scheme that, in, uh, that Christina McKelvey is highlighting that I think deserves the widest possible recognition. And I was very interested to, to realise in the, the, the range of partnership organisations that are involved. As I say, I've mentioned reference to food banks within my constituents. There's also East Renfrewshire CAB, which is in Barhead. And uh, likewise, there's Renfrewshire CAB, which is just outside my constituency. We also have a fantastic local um, energy, uh, community energy project, the Local Energy Action Plan, which is based in Loch Winnock, but serves constituents right across Renfrewshire and I think has tremendous potential to, to expand as well. So I certainly look forward to learning more about this scheme and to, and to follow into learning more about um, my colleague Christina McKelvey's engagement with other energy companies. And uh, I look forward, and I will be after this debate, uh, pestering Christina McKelvey to find out more and to find out how I can see this scheme introduced in my own constituency so that my constituents too can benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Alexander Burnett, followed by Pauline McNeill. Mr Burnett, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I thank Christy McKelvey for bringing a debate on a quick credit voucher to the Chamber. Uh, I also support the efforts by Scottish Power and encourage other energy companies to follow their good example. And when we look at the broader picture, I believe the best way to help those who are in need of fuel assistance is to help them with better insulation and energy efficiency measures in order to reduce their energy bills. And there is certainly more that the Scottish Government can do, and I will set out these suggestions as I progress. And I should note at this point my register of interest, which covers businesses focused on reducing fuel poverty through both the use of renewables and those which carry out improvements to the energy efficiency of housing. Yep. Now, Presiding Officer, I and my con Scottish Conservative colleagues have consistently argued for better energy efficiency in Scottish homes. Mm -hmm. And our manifesto commitment is to spend 10% of the capital budget on making homes energy efficient. And this would have involved spending one billion pounds cumulatively over this parliamentary session. In my areas of the rural constituency, many older people reside in older houses and cottages which are difficult to heat efficiently. And there is a strong relationship between cold temperatures and cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, lower dexterity in the home, mental health issues, and increasingly isolation. And we must acknowledge the fact that the UK government has remained committed to capping energy prices and giving the consumer a fair deal. And recently Ofgem announced that they have extended the safeguard tariff to almost a million vulnerable customers. And I very much welcome this. And on the back of a safeguard tariff that was introduced for over 4 million households on prepayment meters in April last year, following a recommendation from the Competitions and Markets Authorities. And Presiding, Deputy Presiding Officer, I believe that these steps have gone some way in tackling fuel poverty and alleviating the burden on hefty bills on the consumer. But there is more that can be done. Now, there have been changes proposed to the fuel legislation, and a further positive step that the SNP government could do to alleviate poverty has been highlighted by the Federation of Petroleum Suppliers. Many rural homes, far from a gas network, are reliant on using kerosene-powered central heating. However, changes to environmental legislation in Scotland has meant that small to medium fuel suppliers have been hit with additional costs in licensing storage tanks. The Federation has pointed out that in a time where the government is encouraging distributors to support customers facing fuel poverty, any additional costs will put further pressure on the distributor who will have no option but to pass the cost on to the end user. And as I alluded to earlier, rural properties are often older and poorly insulated. And this change of legislation has the potential to severely impact those who are experiencing fuel poverty already in rural areas. And I would seriously urge the SNP government to looking into revising these changes so that this doesn't become an unnecessary barrier to tackling fuel poverty and the expansion of small petroleum supplying businesses. So in conclusion, presiding officer, if we properly invest in energy efficiency measures, we will see the numbers of people in fuel poverty drastically decrease. And so I'm encouraged by the steps taken by Scottish Power 
and would call on other companies to look into similar schemes and call on the Scottish Government to ensure that they are not causing unnecessary price rises in rural fuel deliveries through purely considered legislation. Thank you. Yes, I, I mean, I, I, it was on the edges at times of not speaking to the motion. You did dip in and out. I just warn members to speak to what is down in the motion. There was nothing about insulation and so on in this motion. It was very specific at times. You came back onto it, but be wary. That's to all members to keep speaking to the motion. I now call Polly McNeill to be followed by Kate Forbes. Thank you. There are a few more important issues for the people that we represent than access to affordable energy. And there are a few more controversial issues than the rising cost of fuel for households. Our aspiration is for every single Scot to live in a warm and secure home. Unfortunately, we are far from that goal. And the reality, as Christina McKelvey says, is that a quarter of households in Scotland are in fuel poverty. Christina McKelvey, Councillor Julie Amars and Frank Field MP have done their constituents a great service by trialling the quick voucher scheme introduced by Scottish Power in late 2017. I commend them all for what they have done because I believe that they have trailblazed for the rest of us and I too, like Tom Arthur, am uh, interested to know more about how my constituents can benefit. But as you have heard, it is designed to help customers who have been referred to food, bank, food banks and who may also be in need of one-off assistance with their energy bills. Indeed, Glasgow Central Citizens Advice Bureau is one of the agencies involved in running the Quick Voucher Scheme, which is a lifeline for many people. But I sincerely hope, as Christina has said, that all energy companies will adopt this scheme and that all agencies will refer people to food banks can also refer them and be partners in the scheme. Many customers struggle to pay their bills. And sadly, this number will increase as acute austerity continues with no sign of the cost of living coming down and a real terms peer cut in many sectors. The quick voucher scheme is only part of the solution to a wider problem. But fuel poverty is a health issue too. We all know that if you don't have enough money to heat your home in the winter, then it can seriously damage your health. The National Institute for Clinical Excellence also says that houses should have a minimum EPC rating of C by 2025. So I believe that there has to be an ambitious plan in this parliament to improve insulation and energy efficiency in thousands of homes across the country, and we should take more radical steps to do that. In my view, the big six energy companies do need to be challenged further on how they deal and support vulnerable customers. And at the very minimum, I believe they should be taken off the standard variable tariff and placed on a more favourable deal. I would go further, actually, and make it a mandatory requirement that energy companies should write to all customers on standard variable tariffs and make it clear to them that there are cheaper deals available. The Competition and Markets Authority say that they are paying an average of £300 more. That's a substantial amount of money, and I do think that has to be tackled. I welcome Scottish Power's policy on disconnections as one other way of supporting vulnerable customers. And the customers, as long as they have 0.01 pence on their account by 6 p.m. on their meter, can stay on supply until six, or nine, nine o'clock the following day. And also they have a scheme to show that the repayment of debt associated with a prepayment meter um, has now much friendlier options than previously existed. The central point I make, presiding officer, is that more needs to be done to help vulnerable customers and prepayment meters or those on prepayment meters. Because those who do uh, choose or have to be on a prepayment uh, pre meter should not be penalised for doing so. It is a very sad day in our society that we have to survive with food banks. I hope we, I know that we all long for the day where that is not the case. And now we have fuel banks to stop people slipping into complete deprivation. But at least we have a response that can make a difference. Uh, I welcome the debate that Christina McKelvey has brought to this chamber and I look forward to learning more about the Quick Voucher Scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Kate Forbes, before by Morris Golden. Ms Forbes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is such a fantastic debate to be having on the first day back after recess. I spent a few days over recess in the country of Nepal, staring deprivation in the face. 
And you can come back with a, a real sense of hopelessness, hopelessness at the chronic inequality worldwide. And whilst I can't compare Scotland to Nepal, it is absolutely absurd that in a country of such prosperity with relative stability and a strong democratic system, that our people in Scotland today who face the choice of eating or eating, that the numbers of people using food banks who depend on food banks for their daily meals are going up and that there are those who sit at home in free, the freezing cold unable to pay for their bills. And so I heartily support this motion and would back the calls in it to see this particular initiative rolled out uh, for amongst other energy companies, whether that's E.ON, Enpower, British Gas, EDF and SSE. It can often feel in this job that on a daily basis we're dealing with uh, very hopeless situations and when an MSP comes up with a, a tangible, workable solution that has a direct impact on real people's lives, it deserves huge respect, which I have for Christina McKelvey. Perhaps the problem of uh, fuel poverty is seen nowhere near as stark as it is in the Highlands. In the Highlands, over a fifth of households in the remote and rural areas are classified as being extremely fuel poor. And that means that 20% of a family's income is going on fuel. Another 40% are classified as fuel poor, which means 10% of their income is going on heating the home. And whilst every case of fuel poverty is a family or an individual who is facing that choice of how they spend their money and whether they'll spend another cold night or cold day at home, the particular case in the Highlands and Islands, I believe it is disproportionately unacceptable, particularly when households are often within sight of energy generation when the wires transporting energy from our renewable sources in the Highlands and Islands pass their front door and then return to them at a surcharge. And whilst this debate really is about praising energy companies for, for this initiative, I would be very keen on seeing the Prime Minister introducing a much fairer pricing system as part of her general review of uh, caps on energy costs. Christina McKelvey asked us to imagine this initiative being rolled out across Scotland, and I think that is a fantastic idea. One of the most significant aspects of it is that it appears that it's not just customer-led, but actually it comes down to partner agencies spotting the need. One of the big problems that I have seen is that very humble, particularly members of the elderly population, are sitting at home not knowing what to do about the fact that they can't afford the heating and don't ask for help. And it comes down to partner agencies being aware of who needs help and seeking them out. So Christina McKelvey is very welcome to come to the Highlands and Islands, where I know that she's already a very popular visitor. Uh, and I would love to work with her and anybody else on rolling this out across the Highlands and Island region, which is in dire need of a tangible, workable solution like this. Thank you. I call Morris Golden to be followed by Ruth Maguire. Mr Golden, please. Uh, Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I want to thank uh, Christina McKelvey for bringing this debate forward because fuel poverty is one of the great societal challenges we face. The motion mentions action being taken by Scottish Power to help their customers, and I applaud such initiatives to help their most vulnerable customers and encourage others to do likewise. I recognise Scottish Power have a range of initiatives to place in place to help vulnerable customers from a hardship fund to allowing customers to transfer their debt to cheaper suppliers to less impactful disconnects and of course they support the warms home discount. Commendable as they are, such schemes tackle neither the root causes of fuel poverty or the frightening scale of the, of the problem. In the past week, I've seen the impact of fuel poverty affecting some of the world's poorest in Nepal. Closer to home in Clydebank in the west of Scotland, the Clydebank Post 
ran a feature on how more had to be done to help local families. I agree, and it will require politicians to work together if we are to see success. Almost a million Scots live in fuel poverty, according to Shelter Scotland. It is within our power to solve this. Yet the Chartered Institute of Housing in Scotland note that the current strategy, 10% of households could still be in fuel poverty by 2040. If we are serious about tackling the underlying causes of fuel poverty, we must step up to the challenge. A good start would be recognising the need for action on energy efficiency, a view taken by dozens of organisations such as Age Scotland, Bernardo's and the existing Homes Alliance. So too every opposition party are agreed that a target should be set for a minimum EPC ban C rating. The Scottish Conservatives want to see, the accomplished, uh, to see this accomplished for every property where possible by the end of the 2020s. This would tackle fuel poverty head on. According to the Scottish Fuel Poverty Strategic Working Group, rates of fuel poverty are lower amongst those living in properties with better energy efficiency ratings. Less than a fifth of households in band B and C live in fuel poverty compared with almost three quarters of households in band F and G properties. Heating a home would be easier and cheaper, helping up to 1.5 million households according to WWF Scotland. Almost a million Scots are living in fuel poverty and that's not good enough. Only action will uh, take, uh, we must take action in order to resolve this. Uh -huh, thank you. Again, a little close to the wind and moving off the motion. Um, we'll let that pass for just now. I call Ruth McGuire, well, you've been told. I uh, call Ruth McGuire, please. And you're the last speaker in the open debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thanks to Christina McKelvey for bringing this really important topic to the Chamber and for her tireless campaigning and action on this issue. The blight of fuel poverty is not something that can be eradicated by government alone. Energy providers also have an important role to play, and it's both welcome and encouraging to see that Scottish Power has responded to this duty in an ethical and socially responsible manner. There can be no doubt that the quick credit voucher scheme is making a difference to people's lives, saving individuals and families from some of the anxiety of having to choose between food or fuel. Citrus Energy is a social enterprise based in Ardrossan, which operates in my Cunningham South constituency. It exists to help domestic and commercial energy consumers make genuine savings on gas and electricity costs through impartial advice and support. In advance of this debate, Deputy Operations Manager Margaret Corrigan told me that, and I quote, since December, when we were authorised to use this scheme, we've had 40 vouchers for £49 issued to clients. We found this invaluable for our vulnerable clients. Mrs Rennie is one of the people who Citrus Energy was able to help through the Scottish Power Voucher Scheme. Mrs Rennie suffers from pernicious anemia and asthma and had been working part-time on a zero-hours contract. She's also on universal credit and her working hours had interfered with her universal credit payment. She had no money whatsoever for gas and electricity and was desperate. In her own words, the voucher was a godsend. This case is, of course, also reflective of how benefit sanctions and universal credit are major factors in people needing to use food banks and facing fuel poverty in the first place. Presiding officer, the damage that continues to be caused by universal credit is indisputably clear and it should be halted immediately. Another point I'd like to make is the importance of ensuring that energy companies engage with the widest possible range of partner agencies to deliver support to vulnerable customers. Scottish Power's current partner agencies, for example, include food banks and citizens' advice bureaus, as well as community energy projects like Citrus Energy. But whilst Citrus Energy is authorised to administer Scottish Power's voucher schemes, the various existing support schemes run by suppliers such as British Gas, Enpower and Eon do not currently authorise Citrus Energy as agents to obtain vouchers. Um, or to phone and register on their customers' behalf. 
Citrus Energy have also highlighted to me what they see as a, a bit of a growing issue of the Citizens Advice Bureaus being the only recognised organisations for issues on fuel poverty in the eyes of suppliers. And they point out that not all their clients can readily access bureaus in all areas. Um, and with no other means to source credit for non-Scottish power customers, Citrus Energy has had to negotiate with their suppliers to give them advance credit to allow them to have heating and light. However, this is a loan that is repayable by the client. In addition, energy suppliers may not advance enough credit to see the household through to the next benefit payment. What's more, they often have a policy of only issuing one in a 12-month period although Citrus Energy have managed to secure um, more than that for some very vulnerable customers. Even then, it flies in the face of um, what we're trying to achieve, which is supporting people to get out of debt and budget for their energy. Instead, it results in clients owing money just to be able to have heating and light. So the importance of ensuring that the widest range of organisations is possible or authorised to administer support schemes is definitely something um, to keep in mind as, as the campaign continues. In my own constituency, I intend to look into how we can expand the provision of energy support schemes so they are as accessible to as many people as possible. Presiding officer, against the backdrop of the damaging rollout of universal credit and destructive and punitive sanctions, it's regrettable but a reality that food, fuel poverty and reliance on food banks are everyday threats for many of my constituents. I commend Scottish Power and Empower for the social responsibility demonstrated by their schemes and add my voice to the calls for other companies to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I call on the Minister to close the Government. Mr Stewart, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and I'm grateful to Christina McKelvey uh, for raising this important issue, uh, and I thank everyone for their contributions today. Uh, can I also welcome Isabel Graham and the volunteers to the gallery? Um, you are most welcome. I, I want to welcome also the tireless work of Christina McKelvey, uh, who, alongside Councillor, Councillor Julie Mars, Julia Mars, uh, gained Scottish Power support to pilot the Quick Credit Voucher Scheme and ensured it was set up for her constituents in South Lanarkshire. Um, I would also pay tribute to Frank Field, as Pauline McNeil has done, who has done similar south of the border. And I know in uh, talking to Ms McKelvey um, that she has respect for uh, the manner that he has conducted himself in this issue too. As we've heard, the project offers those using food banks a credit voucher to help with energy costs. And I'm sure members join me in thanking Ms McKelvey uh, for her continued campaigning uh, and will also press other energy companies to follow suit. Uh, initiatives like these uh, help those on the lowest of incomes, people who often have to make the choices uh, between heating and eating, as Kate Forbes and others have said. It's a positive step, uh, but we must not forget that these schemes are only necessary because the UK government's punitive welfare reforms take money out of the pockets and food out of the mouths of some of the most vulnerable people in our society. No one should be hungry and cold and have to rely on emergency help. And I hope that at some point, the UK Tory government will see sense uh, and will do a U-turn uh, on their welfare reform, austerity agenda, social security cuts that we've seen far too many of in recent years. The Scottish Government's £1 million a year Fair Food Fund uh, supports projects across the country to help us eradicate the need for food banks in Scotland. These projects work to tackle food po poverty in dignified ways that build both individual and community. Latest figures indicate recent improvements in fuel poverty levels with almost 100,000 fewer households in fuel poverty in 2016 compared to 2015, uh, which Ms McKelvey also highlighted in her speech. But it has to be said that we know that much more needs to be done. And this government has uh, a clear aspiration uh, to eradicate fuel poverty in Scotland. And although the power to regulate the energy markets rests with the UK government, we are determined to be innovative in using the powers we do have to target support where it's needed most. I do wish, however, um, that Mrs May and her government uh, lived up uh, to uh, their promises 
in terms of capping energy prices, which sadly um, have gone by the wayside. Uh, we are investing more in tackling fuel poverty than any other government. Since 2008, uh, we have helped to deliver over 1 million energy efficiency measures to over 1 million households. And we are on track to deliver our commitment to make £1 billion available for fuel poverty and energy efficiency between 2009 and the end of this parliament. Uh, and it would also be useful if some of the UK government schemes were run a little better. I'm surprised that Ms Hawkey isn't here today. Uh, she normally has something to say about the inadequacies of the UK government's Green Deal scheme, uh, which have failed people right across Scotland. And I do hope that Conservative colleagues in the Chamber uh, will help us uh, get the UK government uh, to put uh, these missold uh, and shabby uh, schemes back uh, into uh, a, a reality where people uh, can go on uh, and live in their households the way that they were supposed to, rather than be left with defective homes. President Officer, I hear Mr Golden uh, uh, speaking from the sidelines there. If he wants to intervene, I'm more than happy to take his intervention on that point. Morris Golden. Uh, I thank the member for taking the intervention. Uh, is the member not embarrassed by the Scottish Government's track record uh, on failure to limit, uh, eliminate fuel poverty? This Minister. Government has done uh, much to uh, alleviate fuel poverty in this country and we will set out our agenda further in our Warm Homes Bill, uh, which will come shortly. I think that, uh, President Officer, maybe the Tories uh, should be a little bit embarrassed about welfare reforms and the stupidities of their uh, fuel poverty schemes which, as I said, have actually uh, put folk backwards in Scotland rather than forwards. And I do hope that Mr Golden will talk to his colleagues south of the border and help us uh, get uh, uh, to a point where those folks who have suffered from the Green, Green Deal actually are compensated for that. Uh, President Officer, we also um, support an impartial supplier switching support service through a partnership between Home Energy Scotland and the social enterprise Citrus Energy, which Ms Maguire has mentioned in their, her speech. And the initiative helps simplify the switching process for those without internet access or who struggle to navigate price comparison websites. Uh, but all of this is not just the responsibility of the Scottish Government, particularly when we do not hold all the powers. Energy companies themselves have a key role in delivering a fairer Scotland. The voucher scheme we are discussing today is encouraging, and I urge more energy companies to look at similar initiatives to help local communities. And of course, uh, we want to work with energy companies in whatever way we can to do that. Last month, the government convened a summit which brought energy suppliers and consumer groups together to find practical solutions. And I believe passionately that this kind of collaboration is the only way to drive real change. For example, as a result of the summit, suppliers have agreed to do more to assist those struggling to pay their energy bills. And we will be working closely with them to develop a process for them to report back to government. Um, we want to make sure this practice goes beyond the traditional big six suppliers too. So this best practice will be shared across the sector and consumer groups like Citizens Advice Scotland uh, will focus on how to engage customers who need the most support to help them switch or avoid self-disconnection. And we continue to look at innovative ways to tackle fuel poverty in our communities, including solutions to improve the energy efficiency of homes and businesses through Scotland's Energy Efficiency Programme, or SEAT for short. By the middle of this century, we will have transformed the energy efficiency and heating of our buildings so that wherever technically feasible and practical, buildings are near zero carbon. And later this year, we will publish a route map for SEEP, which will set out the steps we will take to achieve these ambitions, including the investment we are committed to. And we have also committed to establishing a publicly owned Scottish energy company to support our efforts to reduce uh, fuel poverty and to help achieve our climate change targets. 
and we expect to provide more information on that later this year. Presiding officer, in closing, uh, let me take a moment to remind everyone that all of us need to work together to eradicate poverty and inequality in Scotland. We welcome more energy suppliers joining us in our efforts to tackle fuel poverty by taking forward innovative ideas and projects. And we praise volunteers in community organisations across the country who are working hard to make a real difference to people's lives. Presiding officer, I will finish by once more thanking Christina McKelvey uh, for securing this debate and maintaining momentum and focus on addressing fuel poverty in Hamilton and throughout Scotland. Thank you very uh, Thank much. you. And in fairness to the members I chastised for drifting into energy efficiency, I have to say the Minister also did that. Now, when we have a tightly drawn motion, which it is, then it's incumbent upon members, whoever they may be, to speak to the motion. In part, I understand, Minister, you are responding to issues raised by um, uh, members to my right, but you also had more in it than spoke that was not to do with the motion. So I just say that to all members here. Read the motions carefully. Thank you. That concludes this debate, and I close this meeting.